Hey buddies, a very warm welcome once again to these classes and welcome to this batch, Nexus batch by your Chavi ma'am. A very warm welcome guys. Now in today's class, I will be talking about uh, some more things related to heart. In the previous session, we have discussed the structure of heart. So hope guys, the homework which I gave you in the previous session that is to draw the 2D structure of heart. Hope you guys have done that. Now let's proceed further. Let's see the functioning of heart in a interesting way. Like I told you, I'm going to make this chapter super interesting for you. So hope I am uh, uh, able to do that. And if you're liking, do tell me in the comment section. Now let's start. So these are the topics which we have already done. Open the closed circulatory system. Open circulatory system you'll find in arthropods as well as in mollusk. The closed circulatory system you'll find in the chordates. Comparative anatomy of the vertebrate heart. We have started with the fishes, then the amphibian reptiles and the mammal's heart. That is also done. The human circulatory system, human uh, heart, in fact, we have already done. So let's proceed further. We will be talking about today the cardiac cycle, but before talking about the cardiac cycle, we have to discuss the uh, functioning of a heart and basically uh, basically students will be talking about the nodal tissues which are present be because without talking about the nodal tissue, we will be not going into the cardiac cycle. Then the electrocardiograph double circulation and hopefully, hopefully we will be able to uh, complete this chapter because after the regulation also we have this topic left which is your disorders related to the cardiovascular system. So, we'll start with the conduction of heartbeat, right? Conduction of heartbeat. Now, listen to this point, buddies, very carefully. Now, when we talk about the human heart, listen. Human heart. Human heart is myogenic. Myogenic means the muscles which are present in the heart they are the one which are responsible for the rhythmic actions which is happening in the heart. So myogenic means there are some muscles of heart are responsible for responsible for rhythmicity Rhythmicity of heart. Rhythmicity. Rhythmicity means there is rhythmic action. Contraction, relaxation. Contraction, relaxation. And that is because of some muscles which are present in the heart. Now these muscles, these muscles, these muscles, these muscles are termed as nodal tissues. These muscles, they are also termed as nodal tissues. They are termed as nodal tissues, right? And they are the one whose depolarization, so they basically undergo the process of depolarization. So continuous depolarization and repolarization leads to contraction and relaxation respectively. Clear? So these are nodal tissues responsible for the depolarization and repolarization, right? And that is the reason that is because of these nodal tissues only contraction of, so they are basically the responsible for, again I am writing, responsible for atria and ventricular contraction. See buddies, it's my duty definitely to make this topic super easy for you and that is the, uh, the uh, like the same work I am doing. So, let's talk about it. So, human Right? And as I told you, we are having some nodal tissues. We are having some nodal tissues. Right? And these nodal tissues, they are responsible for the depolarization, the contraction, relaxation of the atria and the ventricle. 
what are the names of these nodal tissues let's talk about it there are four different type of nodal tissues present inside the heart okay one is termed as the s a node s a node this is the sino atrial sino atrial node sino atrial node next one we are having is av node what is that atrio ventricular ventricular node node means nodal tissue next we are having is your bundle of his bundle of his right next we are having the purkinje fibers purkinje fibers right now these different types of the nodal tissues they are responsible for the generation of nerve impulse what all of them do what is the function of all of them the function of all of them is the generation of generation of nerve impulse please remember generation of nerve impulse very important now sa node another name of sa node is pacemaker so let's write about the sa node now they are termed as pace maker pace maker pace maker now you know where are these uh, present let's have a look guys see this is atria this is atria on the right right corner we are having the sa node right upper corner of atria we are having sa node guys can you see this is atria this is a right upper corner right upper corner next we are having the av node which is present on the lower left corner of the atria so where is this sa node this is present this is present on upper upper left left sorry upper right upper right corner of atria which atria the right atria which atria the right atria do not write that's a left atria this is a right atria okay now pacemaker the upper right corner of atria sa node is responsible for generation of generation of nerve impulse <coughs> so one second so they are responsible for generation of nerve impulse right nerve impulse right and you know how much 100 beats per minute this 100 let's write let's write 72 i'll explain you why i'm writing 72 75 beats per minute this much beat is there this much beat how much pace maker upper right corner of atria generation of nerve impulse 70 to 75 beats per minute clear clear s a node pace maker now let's talk about the second one second one av node av node atrio ventricular node and this av node is also termed as pace setter pace setter you know? where it is present where it is present it is present in the lower left 
लोअर लेफ्ट कॉर्नर ऑफ राइट एट्रिया राइट एट्रिया क्लियर नाउ नेक्स्ट वन यस इट इज ऑल्सो रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द जनरेशन ऑफ नर्व इंपल्स जनरेशन ऑफ नर्व इंपल्स एंड वॉट इज दैट दैट इज अराउंड सिक्सटी टू सिक्सटी फाइव बीट्स पर मिनट सिक्सटी टू सिक्सटी फाइव बीट्स पर मिनट that means this much number of time it will allow the atria and the ventricle to contract are you getting these two points the pace maker and the pace setter okay now let's proceed further let's talk about the bundle of his bundle of his they are also termed as one second so bundle of his is also termed as purkinje bundles so these are the bundles of purkinje Clear? Now, the, where are these present? These are present on the interventricular septum. Interventricular septum. That means in between the ventricular. I told you about the septum in the previous session. Uh, in between the ventricular, there is a septum. What do we call this? A uh, interventricular septum. This is how it is present. now the next point is interventricular septum now they are also responsible for the generation of nerve impulse and you know what is that that is around that is around so they generate how much 40 to 45 beats per minute clear let's talk about the purkinje fibers so purkinje fiber you will find in the walls of ventricles walls of ventricle walls of ventricle and there generate they generate how much 22 25 beats Per minute. Clear? Now let's understand this. This is how a heart look like. Here we are having S A node. Then we are having A V node. Now S A node once it will be uh, depolarized. see it will send the signal over here there are some fibers present signal to the av node av node will send a signal to the purkin uh, bundle of his they will be present over here interventricular septum and here we are having purkinje fiber so now they will send these signal to the bundle of his and this is how the contraction occurs so it leads to the contraction of the ventricle now listen very 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 carefully suppose sa node is not working in that case will heart stop functioning no because av node is there and av node is having a capacity of beating yes there will be auto there will be arrhythmicity there will no, no not be a proper rhythm the, because the major rhythm is because of the which one the pacemaker right which is your sa node if sa node is not working but yes some kind of rhythm is there this all thanks to your 60 to 65 beats which is given by the av node are you getting this point so ultimately first of all what will happen there will be a depolarization of the this node these uh, neural tissues this depolarization will reach up to here this will lead to the contraction of atria contraction of atria now there will be depolarization of the bundle of his there will be depolarization of the uh, purkinje fiber that will lead to contraction of ventricles 
and why this contraction relaxation is important so that there should be a proper pumping of blood because if when we are saying the atria are there atria so atria will contract then only the blood will enter into the ventricle i'll tell you 70% passive filling is there we'll be talking about that wait so whenever this atria contract the blood will come inside the ventricle when ventricle will contract this particular let's say this ventricle whenever it will contract the blood will enter into the pulmonary artery well, sorry pulmonary artery yes so from pulmonary artery it will reach up to the lungs so this is the overall circulation this we have discussed in the previous session so that is because of some nodal tissues which are present in the or uh, human heart nodal tissue four type of nodal tissues i have talked about it and the position also hope it is clear so if someone ask you that who generates the maximum potential so you should know it is the sa node then the av node then the bundle of his or bundle of purkinje fiber of his then we are having the purkinje fiber purkinje fiber means they are responsible for the conduction of nerve impulse nerve impulse conduction dum dum now one sec one more thing you have to remember when we talk about the pacemaker the pace maker that is the sa node pacemaker that is sa node pacemaker or sa node is responsible for the basically it is responsible for generation of it can generate 100 beats per minute per minute but it is under the control of vagus nerve vagus nerve these things you have to remember the vagus nerve sorry vagus nerve right it produce or it generate how much 72 70 to 75 beats per minute so suppose the vagus nerve is not working or somewhere or other it is not in the control of the vagus nerve then what will happen the overall beat will not be reduced so heart will beat faster there will be faster so overall yes somewhere or other brain also control your central nervous system also controls uh, the uh, heart rhythmicity so this is the idea you got now let's talk about the heart sound heart sound so human heart produce two sounds one is termed as first sound is termed as lub which is of low intensity and high duration second sound is dub these are the two sounds which are produced by the heart now let's understand this what is the phenomena of the conduction of heart basically how does the heart function let's write let's write i'm another time making this diagram of the heart because see understanding is important and if you are able to understand that means my target of giving you this session that is done now this is a septum interatrial septum this is interventricular septum and these are the atrioventricular septum here one valve is present atrioventricular valve common name is atrioventricular valve atrio ventricular valve 
Clear? Now, similarly, some valve are present over here also. Yes, here we are having a yota. Right? So, this is what? This is a yota carrying the blood, carotid arteries, etc. and etc. Here, buddies, we are having the pulmonary trunk. We have discussed about this, right? Now, the valve which is present, this is termed as the semi lunar valve. What is the name? Semi lunar valve. Now, just imagine this situation. What is happening is we are having blood present over here in the atria. Blood is present over here. Now, what will happen? Blood will enter through the valve and it will enter into the right ventricle. Right? From here, here, blood is present and blood will enter into the left ventricle. Just listen to this point. Now, first step, let's write the step number one. Step number one. Step number one is contraction of atria. Contraction of atria. Both the atria, they will contract together. Both of them, they will contract together. These are the steps. Now, let's talk about the step number 2. What will happen after the contraction? Blood flows. Blood flows. From where to where? From atria to the ventricle. Now, the blood is there in the ventricle. Now, from atria to the ventricle. Clear? Hmm. Atria to ventricle. Now, what will be the step 3? Step 3. Now, atrial, atria, now the ventricle is full of blood. Now, there will be contraction of ventricle. Now, there will be contraction of ventricle. Contraction of ventricle. When there is contraction, see, when the blood is there, now we are having blood. Here. Now, please understand, we are having blood filled over here. Blood filled over here. Now, what will happen? They will contract. They will contract. And if they will contract, the chances that these blood, because when it is contraction, so chances that blood can go back to the atria. Blood can go back to the atria. Yes, this is possible. Now, after at this particular time, what will happen? There will be closure of atrioventricular valve. What is the step number three? Sorry, step number four. There will be closure of atrio ventricular valve. Whenever these bicuspid and tricuspid valve, this is a tricuspid, this is a bicuspid valve, whenever these valve close, they produce a sound of lub. So, which sound will be produced? Lub. Lub. Let's talk about next step, step 4, step 5. Step number 5. Now, what will happen now? What will happen, buddies? Now, it will contract. Now, the blood will enter into the iota and pulmonary trunk. Will enter in iota and pulmonary pulmonary trunk 
blood will enter into aorta and pulmonary trunk right now the chances are there now it is in contract stage as you can see there is a contraction of the ventricle now what will happen step 6 relaxation of relaxation of ventricle so if there is relaxation of ventricle the chances that this blood can come back into the ventricle yes this blood can come back into the ventricle and that we do not want right do you want this buddies no right you don't want so we don't want this now what is the next step step number seven step number seven closure of semilunar valve semilunar valve and when there is uh, closure of this semilunar valve a sound is produced and what is that that is dub will you remember now hope you will not forget how these heart sounds are produced and yes they are of utmost very important significance if uh, anyone is having uh, anyone is facing any problem related to the heart their first thing is with the help of stethoscope the heart sound is checked is there is any heart murmur so hope it is clear okay buddies so all these steps i told you so let's write the difference between these two sounds lub and dub <coughs> so lub here i'm writing lub here i'm writing dub okay now the lub sound when it is produced lub sound is produced by closure of which wall atrio ventricular ventricular valve i am not saying only tricuspid or bicuspid i am talking about both of them because atrial contraction occurs simultaneously now dub is produced by closure of closure of the semilunar valve right so these sounds they are produced now lub sound lub sound is of uh, low intensity low how will you remember this is l square this is l square this is low intensity but longer duration longer duration longer duration whereas a dub sound dub sound is of high intensity high intensity and short duration for short duration now when these sounds are produced what is the difference in the duration of these two sounds this we will be looking at with the help of a cardiac cycle because if i'll give you that data now i'm 100% sure you'll not be able to understand so there are some topics which actually needs patience not only yours uh, in fact that require my patience also so i'll tell you the difference between these two but now let's talk about the next topic which is the cardiac cycle now students what is a cardiac cycle what is this cardiac cycle all about cardiac cycle that means the whole contraction of atria 
contraction relaxation of atria one cycle cycle something which is starting the contraction and relaxation contraction and relaxation of atria contraction relaxation of ventricle or contraction relaxation of the heart muscle whatever you want to say you can say this so cardiac cycle is what cardiac cycle is one contraction and relaxation relaxation of atria we can say in the terms of atria right the ventricle or the muscles which are present in the heart right they are contraction relaxation whatever it is it is c clear so cardiac cycle whole cycle one cycle i am saying right so what is that duration you know the duration of one cardiac cycle is duration of this is 0.8 second now would you like to have a understanding of this topic i'll tell you see uh right now if you're not able to understand this i'll make this topic simple to you now cardiac cycle cardiac cycle means see we are having atria atria will contract atria will relax one cardiac cycle ventricle will contract ventricle will relax it's a cardiac cycle only what is that the cardiac cycle so contraction and relaxation that itself include the cardiac cycle now whole cardiac cycle is of 0.8 second let's talk about first the atrial contraction atrial contraction right so ncert says atrial contraction is your atrial systole atrial systole contraction occurs for 1 second 1 second i'll i'll make you understand this topic don't worry now next one we are having is ventricle contraction sorry let's write atria only atrial relaxation or atrial diastole atrial diastole this is 0.7 second let's look at this diagram and let's understand see i told you that this is how the atria look like this is how the ventricle look like now the first thing is they will contract for one second they contract for 0.7 second they will take 0.7 second to relax that's it so total is 0.8 seconds similarly the ventricle contract and ventricle relax total time 0.8 seconds clear let's talk the same with respect to the ventricles uh, uh, uh. ventricles no ventricle contract or ventricle systole both are same ventricle systole 0.3 second it takes 0.3 seconds whereas when i'm seeing the ventricle relax or ventricle diastole diastole so this is 0.4 second clear 
Clear? A simple data I have given you. Very simple, easy data I have given you. Now let's understand and let's solve all the numericals related to the cardiac cycle. Now with this you will be able to understand each and everything. Yes. So let's have a look. See, we will divide this circle. It's a cycle. Cycle is a circle. So same thing I am doing, buddies. Now look at this. I am writing this circle as 0.1 second, 0.3 second and 0.4 second. Any issues? This is my wish. This is my wish of writing. Clear? Now I am making the uh, questions which will be asked from this topic. Very, very, very simple to for you. Now 0.1 second. So 0.1 second is your atrial. I am writing over here. This is your atrial atrial systole this is the atrial system now first thing is the atria will contract atria will contract listen atria will contract now atria will contract then what will happen there will be relaxation uh, the, uh, because there is a contraction so simultaneously there is a relaxation of the ventricles also now what will happen, the 0.3 second, the ventricle will contract. What will happen now? 0.3 second, ventricle systole will happen. Ventricle systole. Clear? Now please understand this topic. This is a atrial systole. Atrial systole. What is this happening? Atrial systole. So that means, that means for and rest of the thing, rest of the time, the atria will relax. For rest of the time, what will happen? The atria will diastole. Atria will diastole. Atria will relax. First, only look at the atrial systole. Point one second. For rest of the time, for rest of the time, what will happen? The atria will undergo the diastole procedure. Uh, uh, uh. Now look at this. I'm making another circle. Mm -mm. Listen to this point. Now, for this much duration, look at this. There is ventricular contraction. For this much duration, there is ventricular contraction. What is this happening, buddies? Ventricular contraction, ventricular system. Clear? What about for the rest? But is for the rest of the time what is happening? For this particular time, what is this happening? Till uh, this point, what is this happening? There is ventricular diastole. Ventricular diastole. Clear? Point 0.1 second is only dedicated, is dedicated to atrial systole. And partial, partial, 0.1 second is ventricular diastole. Clear? 
ventricular systole which is happening simultaneously along with the ventricular systole what is happening is the atrial diastole is happening the atrial diastole is happening see uh, i'll tell you what is this happening let's understand this let's look at this diagram atria is contracting for 0.1 second for 0.1 second it contracts clear then point this atria this uh, ventricle see 0.1 second it takes right 0.1 second it is contracting clear after the contraction the relaxation will start for 0.7 second listen here for 0.2 second 7 second relaxation will start relaxation will occur here the contraction is happening for 0.3 second contraction is happening for 0.3 second clear that means when they are contracting when they are contracting for 0.3 seconds they have already started relaxing they have that means 0.3 second relaxation is already done now what will happen after 0.3 second this ventricles will relax and atrial is also relaxing for that time are you getting that point please understand see if you if you'll not focus on this point you will not be able to understand we are having four different chambers for 0.1 second look at this for 0.1 second there is contraction and for rest of the 7 second there is relaxation 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 is happening clear okay? now we have a ventricle like this now ventricle is contracting for 0.3 seconds then relax for 0.4 second so this relaxation of 0.4 second is happening here also this is happening here also clear okay? so that is termed as the joint diastole what do we call this this 0.4 second is also termed as your joint diastole joint diastole would you like to have a look would you like to have a uh, uh, let's revise whatever we have done so far so now i'll make the things easy because you know i love writing steps so let's write those steps now step number 1 now this i am writing with respect to contraction and relaxation here guys i am not mentioning uh, the closing and the opening of the valve now the first step what what we have is the contraction of atria or atria systo how long point 1 second clear now next step is contraction of sorry relaxation of next step is atria atria will relax and for how long this procedure go for 0.7 second 0.7 second easy right now let's talk about the step number 2 step number 2 now contraction of atria we are having once the contraction of atria is done right for 1 second if the contraction of atria is done for 1 second if the contraction of atria listen to this point it is done now what will happen once it is done what will happen there will be contraction of contraction of ventricle clear during the relaxation of atria this is contracting clear for how many second 0.3 second clear are you getting this point contraction and then relaxation then what will happen relaxation of ventricle for how long total 0.4 second 0.4 second so 
0.4 second over here and 0.4 second over here simultaneously there is relaxation of atria so that is the reason term is given as joint diastole clear so term is given as joint diastole so first there is contraction of atria then what will happen the contraction of ventricle will start for the 3 second 0.3 second the relaxation is occurring see simultaneously here the relaxation here the contraction contraction Oh, uh, you, you should understand the lower side is contracting and upper side the vent atria they are relaxing relaxing they are still relaxing they are still relaxing they are re in relaxed stage and the relaxation of ventri ventricle is also happening so from this stage to this stage this is termed as the joint diastole so the word is written over here I am writing is the joint diastole So, if someone asks you what is joint diastole, that means a com complete relaxation of the atria as well as ventricle. Clear? Clear? Now, let us talk about the end diastolic volume. One second. Let us talk about the end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. End diastolic volume, we always read in terms of ventricle ventricle now we are having ventricles like this right after now what this end diastolic volume means after relaxation after relaxation relaxation of ventricle How much volume of blood does it has? Volume of blood does it has? Means maximum blood which is present in the ventricle. And you know what is that? That is around 120 ml. How much? 120 ml. 120 ml. 120 ml. So that means this 120, so answer should be 120 ml. One more concept I would like to discuss with you. This 120 ml, which is filled in ventricle, 70%, 70% is because of passive filling. Passive filling. Passive filling means, passive filling, atria is filling, atria is filling, simultaneously, uh, uh, there is filling of the ventricles also. So, 70% comes like this. Plus, 30% of this is by the contraction. See, this is stubborn. By the contraction of ventricle. Contraction of ventricle. Clear? Yeah. So, total we are having 120 ml. So, what will be your answer? End diastolic volume. So, your answer, whenever student, any teacher asks you, answer, what is end? End means end of what? The diastole. Diastole means relaxation. End volume is always 120 ml. How much? 120 ml. Clear? Yeah. Now, let us talk about end systolic volume. End systolic volume. <clears throat> now we are having ventricles like this. And here buddies, some vessels they are going out. Right? I am not saying the right or the left one. This is related to each ventricle. Both the ventricle size they are same. Now what will happen? After the contraction, if you are contracting this bottle, if you are contracting this bottle, if you will contract, so please remember, after complete contraction of ventricle, complete contraction of ventricle, 50 ml of blood remains in ventricle 50 ml of blood remains in ventricle 
right that is termed as end systolic volume right please understand we are having a bottle let's take an example of this bottle let me take another bottle wait i'll show you now i have this bottle and this bottle is filled with filled with water what i am doing is i am compressing these bottle let's compress compress what will happen the water will come out it will spill and that i don't want right now and once the water will spill see see so after the complete contraction once i'll complete contract this only 50 ml remains what about the rest rest that means 70 ml will go out so that means 70 ml of blood goes out goes out that is termed as the stroke volume stroke volume so when there is one beat relax a contraction and relaxation one beat so how much blood goes out from the heart what is that 50 ml sorry 70 ml are you getting this point and what is what is remain in uh, the blood what is there what what will remain in the blood that is what will remain in the ventricle and what is that that is just 50 ml are you getting this point see this topic is uh, interesting as well as you will be able to understand this topic only when you will be having a clear uh, concept knowledge clear so for this particular category the answer is 50 ml 50 ml right for this category diastolic 120 ml for end systolic volume hope it is clear now what is the stroke volume how much do they a uh, pump what is that mean let's write volume of volume of blood pumped by pumped by each ventricle each ventricle per beat per beat means per contraction one contraction one relaxation means per beat right so what is that end diastolic volume total volume diastole filled volume if we minus with the end systolic volume what will we get the stroke volume so 120 if we are going to minus with the end systolic volume which is the 50 ml it will come out to be 70 ml isn't it easy easy peasy yes let's talk about the cardiac output so cardiac output so cardiac output this we calculate per minute so how do we do that stroke volume plus beats per minute per minute how do we calculate that let's have a look what is stroke volume stroke volume is your how much stroke volume 70 ml how many times 72 times we beat per minute so this will be your cardiac output so if you can calculate by yourself so what we have studied till now the end diastolic volume that means after relaxation of uh, ventricle the volume of blood total blood which is present in the ventricle total blood 120 ml end systolic the one which is left after the contraction systole contraction with respect to the ventricle why we say with respect to the ventricle the reason is because ventricle is the structure which is going to push out the blood clear okay. now stroke volume is also clear hope the cardiac output is also clear isn't it interesting hope this top hope you are finding these topics super duper interesting let's talk about another topic which is a electrocardiogram and we have to discuss <coughs> the electrocardiograph uh, also <coughs> electrocardiogram is the name of the machine 
right you all must have seen in the movies that uh, there are a condition where such type of wave such type of waves goes on and uh, whenever there is a straight line that means cardiac arrest happened or uh, that patient is no more mm, zzz, a straight line is coming you must have seen that in serials very common so that is a electrocardiograph machine is cracked to cardiograph and the data which we get is a electrocardiogram uh, gram this is like this graph this is a gram now electrocardiogram how it is uh, done so this is done with the help of machine that i told you electrocardiograph here there are some uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do we call? I just forgot. Like there are, uh, like it happens. Like uh, what do we do is we put some kind of uh, basically what do we do? We detect whether our uh, ventricles they are contracting properly or not. Whether our uh, 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 con uh, atria are contracting properly or not whether there is a depolarization or repolarization happening or not now before talking about this topic i would like to discuss with you some small small topics the first thing is i'll be discussing atrial depolarization so atrial depolarization that means because of the sa node depolarization is occurring depolarization and that depolarization will lead to many students they get confused that ma'am the depolarization means contraction no depolarization leads to the contraction of the atria repolarization will lead to the relaxation so we have to discuss all, each of these clear okay then some more students some very very small topics they are also left so we will be talking about this now this how this whole procedure is done we take some leads leads your NCRT talks about some leads are there so these leads they are placed over here here right they are placed over this ankle and towards the left left your left uh, 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 ankle also so we get a triangle one two two and the left one why on the left side why do we keep that on left side the reason why we keep on the left side is because when we talk about the apex of the heart is present on the left side that is the reason a triangle we make clear a triangle a such type of triangle similarly we place some electrodes on the chest also that uh, gives us an idea of the depolarization and the repolarization activity present occurring in the heart clear so yes rest we will be discussing in the detailed session now <clears throat> the first thing we are we can see that some waves are there guys look at this look at this some waves are there guys can you see this wave one then we are having QRS waves. Then we are having the T wave. How many waves? Three different waves are there. Waves. I am only talking about the wave. Wave. P wave, Q, QRS wave and the T wave. P wave is responsible for atrial, atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization. Right. The QRS complex is responsible for ventricle, it shows ventricular depolarization. Now, the T wave indicate the ventricular repolarization. Repolarization. These are the waves. I am not saying the segment. You know, the waves which are created. How, do, how does a wave look like? Wave look like this. So, this is, I am only talking about the wave. The P wave, the QRS wave and the T wave. Now, listen. Whenever any depolarization or repolarization is happening, it leads to contraction and relaxation of the atria and the ventricle. Let's have a look. So, 
when i'm saying student p wave so p wave is what the atrial depolarization atrial d polarization are you getting this point and when i'm saying the qrs wave this leads to this uh, this is because of the ventricular depolarize depol depolarization means there is change in the potential of the membrane now whereas the t wave indicates the ventricular ventricular repolarization clear atrial depolarization has started indicated by the p wave now there is a segment which is termed as p 2 r interval p 2 r interval guys can you see p2 r interval p2 r interval guys can you see this interval this interval because a contraction has started pr interval pr interval indicate the contraction will start whole atrial contraction so pr interval include first there will be atrial depolarization listen very carefully atrial depolarization then there will be atrial contraction it leads to atrial contraction contraction now next one we are having the qrs wave now the q wave you know the things are going down things are going down now the what will happen the ventricular will start uh, 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 you can say the depolarization right now here we have a interval which is termed as guys can you see the qt interval we are saying the qt interval qt interval q to t interval what is this happening the first thing is qt interval from q to t what is happening the ventricular depolarization ventricular membrane will be depolarized polarization and once they are uh, depolarized there will be ventricular contraction ventricular contraction clear hope it is clear till now now next we are having is a t wave look at this t wave t wave t wave now t wave that means ventricular repolarization is happening so from t wave t to next p wave next there will be p wave so t to p wave what will happen t to next p wave interval what will happen the ventricular repolarization See, it is denoted by this wave. Wave, ventricular repolarization, and it will lead to ventricular relaxation. Clear? Everyone, is it clear? Very easy topic. just that your understanding is important buddies p wave wave which are there it indicates a polarization or the depolarization now here the depolarization has started now depolarization that means a whole segment there will be contraction it will lead to the contraction of the atria clear pr interval now after the q wave after the q wave the qrs complex this particular complex indicates this jerk indicates the ventricular depolarization now there will be a ventricular contraction that is indicated by the qt interval so this is how it will go now next we are having is a t wave now t wave is a ventricular repolarization repolarization that means now it will start that means the ventricles will start uh, uh, relaxing itself clear clear hope it is clear 
PR interval, there is QT interval, a interval, things are happening in the form of an interval and then there will be T to P interval, next P interval, till then the ventricular repolarization will happen, this, these are the things which you have to understand, that's it guys, clear, so this is an electrocardiograph, now the question arises for how long does it take, now atrial contraction occurs for 0.1 seconds, that you know, the Ventricular contraction, ventricular contraction, when ventricles they are contracting, that is 0.3 seconds and the ventricular repolarization, ventricular relaxation, 0.4 seconds. That's it. So, this gives us an idea of the time interval. This gives us an idea of the P wave, QRS or the ventricular. Any change in the P wave, that means some atrial depolarization and problem is there in the SA node. When QR is changing it there, that means some depolarization is not able to happen in the ventricular region, some problem in the bundle of his in the Purkinje fiber or the AV node because AV node is the one which is going to conduct this nerve impulse. Next is a T wave, the contraction, the filling time is also important clear and if filling times are also, uh, if it, it is not happening properly, so chances that heart is overloaded they're not getting the time for the relaxation. So that is the reason if that is affected, so that means cardiac output will also be affected. Clear? Now, one more topic that I would like to discuss with you. Here in the cardiac cycle, can you tell me where will the lub sound come? Where will we get the dub sound? Should I give you this homework? Okay, now atrial systole, atrial systole, just after the contraction, the relaxation will start, right? And relax the relaxation, the ventricular systole, ventricle contraction, just because before the ventricle contraction, the lub sound will be produced over here, lub sound. Now, ventricular contraction, ventricular contraction, once ventricle will uh, uh, relax, here the dub sound will be produced. So, what is the difference after lub and the dub? 0.3 seconds. So, first sound is lub and the dub. For the next cardiac cycle, the difference is 0.5 seconds. So, this is the things which you have to remember that also. Clear? Now, the double circulation. Double circulation topic we have already discussed. So, in our body, what do we have is complete double circulation. What do we have is complete double circulation complete double circulation that means two circles are formed what do we have is the two circles here yeah. so this is a circle number one this is a circle number two two circles are there two circles of circulation right and these circulation two complete complete means these circles they are not overlapping so this is non-overlapping I am making you understand this concept in a very easy way, non-overlapping, non-overlapping. When there is overlapping, so that means there is an incomplete circulation, incomplete double circulation. Now, the two circulation which we are discussing, the first one is the pulmonary circulation and second we have is the systemic circulation. One is pulmonary circulation and second one is systemic circulation two circulation are there clear and how is it possible let's have a look so look at this uh, uh, uh. so here i am making This is how our heart look like. Clear? I'm just making a rough diagram of the heart. These are the atrias and the ventricles. This is how they are divided. Now, first thing is we are having body tissues over here. Tissues. Body tissues. So definitely these body tissue will be releasing the deoxygenated blood. 
whenever they release deoxygenated blood, deoxygenated blood enter over here, right, into the the right atria. What is this? Right ventricle. This is left atria, left ventricle. Clear? Are you getting this point? So, this is how a vein look like. Clear? So, it goes like this. Here, we are having tricuspid wall which allows the uh, movement of uh, blood from the right uh, atria to the right ventricle. Now, what happens is here, this will carry the blood. Blood will reach up to the lungs. So, here we have is the lungs. So, see, it has reached up to the lungs. Lungs. So, here in the lungs, the oxygenation will occur. Now, this will bring the blood back, oxygenated blood back with the help of a pulmonary vein. Clear? Now, what happens is, blood will go from here to here and this is how the blood will travel. So, this is termed as double circulation. Now, let us label everything. Now, this is a lung, right? And so, first of all, we are discussing the right atria. Tissues, they are giving deoxygenated blood. So, what is this? This is your vein. Vein. Right? Vein. Your systemic vein. So, vein, we, we sh you should also know, you should always know the vein, they go towards the, go towards the heart. Right. So, vein carry what? Deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood. It carries the deoxygenated blood. Clear? It carries the deoxygenated blood. And you should always remember they reach up to the heart, right? They start from the organ. They always start from the organ. The, their, their destination is always heart. Now, it has reached up to the RA, then the RV. Now, from here, there will be a pulmonary structure arise. And what is that? That is termed as pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery. See, I will tell you the reason why it is termed as pulmonary artery. So, you should remember from the tissue towards the heart. When we are saying towards the heart, towards the heart, the one which comes is always vein. The one which goes out is always artery. So, the name is artery. But this artery carry what? It always carry deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood. What does it carry? Deoxygenated blood. Clear? Pulmonary artery. So, this is a pulmonary artery. Clear? This is just a vein. Now, let us proceed towards this. From the lung, the oxygenation will occur. Now, here what will happen? Here what will happen? There will be pulmonary vein because it is going towards the heart. So, it is a vein. So, the name is pulmonary vein. But it carries oxygenated blood because now the blood is oxygenated. So, it will carry oxygenated blood. Clear? Now, we are having this also. And what is this? This is your artery. So, arteries always carry blood away from the heart and it will be carrying the oxygenated blood. Carrying the oxygenated blood. Clear? Right? So, this is termed as a double circulation. So, double circulation, that means circulation is happening twice. See, one, one circulation, one and 2, then this particular circulation. So, circulation is happening 
toys toys now listen very carefully now this particular circle this particular circle which circle from the right atrium to the lungs to the left atrium right this is this is termed as the pulmonary circulation this is termed as pulmonary circulation two circles this is termed as the systemic circulation systemic means that means it is coming towards the tissue right some things are coming towards the tissues and some things are they are going out out from the tissue this is termed as a double circulation now before proceeding further let's talk about the difference between arteries and veins okay artery here i am writing vein clear now let's make a diagram of a artery and a vein see understanding this topic is rather more important than just cramming things clear no listen very carefully ha 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 there are different layer outermost layer is termed as tunica externa which is made up of connective tissue which is made up of connective tissue right next layer this particular layer this is the tunica media which is thick what is this tunica media and tunica media is made up of the smooth muscle smooth muscle clear now the lowest layer we are having is a tunica intima this is made up of endothelium the squamous endothelium squamous fat layer uh, flat flat layer of cells clear yeah? now what is this the center is termed as lumen the center is what the lumen clear yeah? this is how a artery look like let's look at the vein how does a vein look like uh, <coughs> yes so this is how it look like so here what do we have is the lumen lumen right same layers they are present this is the this is the tunica externa 
this is the tunica media and this is the tunica externa clear all three layers they are present over here also now here over bodies you can see the muscular layer that smooth muscle layer is not that thick it is thin and the lumen is wide so this is how a vein look like so this is the difference so hope the difference i am able to explain the things in a better way vein now let's write the difference between these let's write okay mm, okay wait so first of all artery arteries do what arteries mostly carry oxygenated blood oxygenated blood we have an exception also except pulmonary artery except pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood right now what else they carry blood they carry blood away from heart away they always carry blood away from heart right they are having narrow lumen narrow lumen and they are having thick media layer media layer right now the artery in the artery you will find pressure the blood pressure is high blood pressure in this case is always high as compared to vein clear and in this case no valve is present no valve valve will not be present over here now let's talk about vein now vein the first thing is mostly carry deoxygenated blood mostly carry deoxygenated blood right and we have an exception also except except pulmonary vein which carries oxygenated blood now they carry blood away from heart they carry blood towards the heart carry blood towards the heart towards the heart it carries blood clear towards the heart that means it start from the organ and it will reach up to here now what else they are having wide lumen wide lumen and they are having thin media layer thin media layer tunica media yeah next blood pressure is low comparatively blood pressure comparatively we are comparing both of them is low next we are having yes they are having valve valve present so how will you remember this i'll tell you see wait now the vein they are arising from the tissue vein they are coming from the tissue and vein when they are coming from tissue definitely the pressure will be less because the pressure was created by heart from the heart the arteries arise so pressure will be more in the arteries as compared to vein you should remember vein always carry blood from the tissue to the organ so deoxygenated blood it carries so when it carries a deoxygenated blood so pressure is less so they need valve so what is the function of valve to prevent the backflow of blood clear yeah? so this is the difference between a artery and a vein so hope you will never ever do this mistake clear yeah? the arteries and the veins difference let's talk about the further 
Now, buddies, let's talk about two more portal systems. First, let's talk about the hypophyseal or first let's talk about the hepatic portal system, then hypophyseal portal system. Hepatic portal system. Hepatic portal system. Clear? Next, we will be discussing hypophyseal in a very short way. I will be uh, making you understand this topic. Hypophyseal portal. Hypophyseal portal system we will be discussing in the chapter uh, chemical coordination also. But here I am just giving you an overview of these two topics. Now, Imagine that this is a small intestine, small intestine, right, small intestine is there, right, and what you are doing is, you are eating everything, you are taking in drugs also, so here in the small intestine, the drugs will also absorb, drugs will also absorb, here because of the metabolic processes, the Ammonia formation also occur. Ammonia formation also occur. Right? And some activation of these drugs, they are also important. Now, in a normal circulation, just imagine. In a normal, in a normal circulation, in this case, what happens is, the intestine, intestine, this is an intestine, right? This is an intestine. And here, we are having the blood vessels. Here, see, we are having the blood vessels. So, this is how a blood vessel I am uh, representing. This is a blood vessel. So, things will be absorbed. So, all these things which are present, they will be absorbed, right? So, they will be absorbed. Clear? Now, this particular blood vessel will go up to the liver. They will go up to the another organ which is the liver. Which organ is it? The liver. And what is this? This is a portal vein. So, buddies, look at this. They are, they are coming from the organ, intestine. They are coming from the organ. So, definitely it will be vein. So, this is the portal vein, portal vein, portal vein will drain into the liver. In the liver, two things happens. The first thing is detoxification of drug, detoxification of drugs. Or sometimes the drugs are like this that they are activated in uh, liver. And the second thing is the urea cycle, the ornithine cycle, crab hanselate cycle. So, with the help of urea cycle, ammonia, which you know is toxic, it's very toxic, very toxic, will be converted into the urea which is least toxic least toxic clear now clear now what will happen another vessel will arise from the liver liver which will carry these detoxified drugs and the urea and this will reach up to where? It will go up to the heart. It will go up to the heart. Clear? And this is termed as hepatic vein. Hepatic vein. So, just imagine this situation. If there is this particular vessel going straight so that means drugs will also go into lungs the 
uh, ammonia will also go into the sorry heart so this is this should not be done so this we do not want right this we do not want you know the heart is vital organ and that actually we do not want clear now this is all about the hepatic portal system now let's talk about the next one what is that hypophysial hypophysial portal system let's talk about hypophysial portal system so on the contrary same type of portal circulation occur in the hypothalamus as well so this is a hypothalamus right this is the anterior pituitary in the next chapter uh, that means uh, the chemical coordination we will be discussing that here here there exists a portal circulation what is this this is a portal circulation and what is the important of importance of this portal circulation what is the importance guys the importance is that this particular portal circulation particular portal circulation this one is responsible for responsible for for transfer of of because hypothalamus controls the hormone uh, uh, which are released by the anterior pituitary right so hypothalamus release the, the releasing hormone responsible for transport of the releasing the stimulating or inhibiting hormone stimulating hormone and this controls the this is how they control the anterior pituitary so there exists a portal circulation so in a simple way if someone asks you what is the portal circulation portal circulation is the circulation between two different uh, uh, structure normally circulation happens between the heart and the body tissue heart and the lungs this is how circulation occur when it is occurring between the two structures or the two organs of the body which you can see over here so this is termed as a portal circulation portal circulation renal portal circulation is another type of circulation which is absent in mammals that is not found in mammals so hope it is done let's proceed further let's talk about the regulation of the cardiac activity how do we regulate cardiac activity let's have a look cardiac activity Cardiac activity regulation that means can our nervous system increase or decrease the heart rate or any chemicals which are there in the body can they increase or decrease the heartbeat? Yes, this is very much possible. <coughs> so, in the brain we have a region which is termed as medulla. See I told you buddies many times I told you that majorly majorly who is responsible for this the one who is responsible for such kind of circle such kind of regulation is mostly medulla right and this we have uh, understood in the various other uh, topics also clear clear now the medulla medulla activates the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system it activate clear autonomic nervous system so autonomic nervous system has two impact the sympathetic one and the parasympathetic clear and this affects the heart and how does it happen wait i'll tell you so here here we are having sa node what we are having is SA node. So, one organ, one structure which is affected by them is the SA node. So, this affects the SA node and similarly, this affects the SA node. Clear? 
Clear? Now the two system we are discussing, sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerve. Now, here I am discussing first the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system. Right? You know the sympathetic nervous system means what? Systematic nervous system will increase the heart rate, right? And here the uh, which are released are the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. So which one will be released? The epinephrine and norepinephrine. these will be released. Now what will happen? They will increase the activity of the SA node. So that means heart rate will be increased. What will happen? The heart rate will increase. <coughs> when heart rate increase, can I say the cardiac output increase? Can I say this? Yes. So cardiac output increases. Cardiac output increases. Clear everyone? Clear? Okay. Let's talk about the parasympathetic. Parasympathetic nervous system. Right? In the parasympathetic nervous system, there is one nerve. We have talked about this earlier. This is a vagus nerve. Right, vagus nerve. So, you know that SA node has a capacity to generate an impulse of around 100 beats per minute. But that doesn't happen. And why it doesn't happen? Because this is under the control of the vagus nerve. Clear? So, it controls it. And here, the one which is released, you all know, that is the acetylcholine. We will be discussing these in the... Uh, chemical coordination in detail, acetylcholine, epinephrine, what are their function and what does it do? It decreases, right, the blood pressure, sorry, it decreases the heart rate. Heart rate <coughs> further decreases the C cardiac output. Cardiac output. Yeah. So, this is how a nervous control look like and NCRT talks about some chemicals are also there such as some chemicals like your thyroid hormone, thyroid and adrenal gland hormone, adrenal gland hormone increases the heart rate. Clear? Clear? So, detail we will be discussing in the chemical control and coordination. How do they function? What are their rules? How does it affect? Everything in the next chapter. Clear? Or maybe the next to next chapter. Now we are into the last topic of today's class that is the disorders. So buddies let's discuss some disorders. So disorders of circulatory system. First disorder which is mentioned in your NCRT is the high blood pressure or the hypertension. So what is a blood pressure? Many students they say the pressure inside the vessel is termed as the blood pressure. No. See this is how our blood vessel look like. Right. And you know the blood flows in it. This is how the blood is there. No. The blood which is present definitely exerts a pressure on the arterial wall. Arterial wall. Wall. W-A-L-L. This is termed as a blood pressure. <coughs> this is termed as blood pressure. So we measure blood pressure in two different ways. One is termed as systemic blood pressure systemic pressure systemic pressure and second is termed as diastolic pressure dia 
stolic pressure there is difference between these two let's have a look so when buddies i am saying the systemic pressure so systemic pressure means what that means after the contraction after the contraction of ventricle what is the pressure in the artery right now pressure in artery or bp in artery after after ventricular i'll tell you why uh, we only discuss ventric ventricular contraction so once ventricle are contracted once ventricles are contracted once there is contraction in the ventricle so that means the blood which will come out from the ventricle that will be present in the artery so we are talking about that pressure and that pressure will be high and what is that pressure that is around 120 mm of hg mm of hg now when ventricle is relax when ventricle is relax please imagine uh, listen to the situation ventricle is relax that means now the pressure in the arteries will be less so that means bp in artery blood pressure in artery when ventricle is in relaxed state is in relaxed it is relaxed it is enjoying relaxed state here this is termed as the diastolic pressure and you know how much is it it is around 80 mm of hg any problem if there is any problem that means either increase or decrease in this pressure that means some heart condition is there with age yes this blood pressure increases because of so many factors so one the blood pressure when it increases beyond your ncert says when it increases beyond 140 and 90 that condition 140 90 not normal is 120 80 it increases beyond 120 140 and 90 so this is termed as a hypertension now hypertension you know it is not good for the heart that means with this much force blood will be flowing if it is leaving the heart at this pressure ultimately high pressure will be entering in the uh, uh, heart also so with time it is not good for the heart hypertension is the term for the blood pressure that is higher than normal and what is normal 120 to 80 mm in this measurement 120 mm of hg is systolic or pumping pressure and 80 mm is diastolic or the resting pressure if repeated check of blood pressure of individual 140 by 90 or higher it shows hypertension what do we call this hypertension so it leads to the heart disease and it also affects the vital organs such as the brain and the kidney clear now the next disorder we all know now nowadays because of our lifestyle the blood pressure the hypertension problem is quite prevalent earlier it was like after 50 or 60 people used to get the hypertension now even the 35 to 40 uh, aged people they are also uh, facing the problem of the hypertension earlier the cardiac arrest or the heart attack used to happen after 60 years of age nowadays our uh, uh, <coughs> ingestion basically the food whatever we are taking that is rich in fat we take so much fat butter ghee oil that is not good for our health and how they are not good for health let's have a look next we are having a coronary artery disease coronary artery disease coronary artery coronary artery is that artery look at this line coronary artery so what is this coronary artery this is that artery which supplies to heart this is that artery which supplies to heart heart muscle definitely heart muscles they are also living the cardiac muscle so they also need oxygen suppose 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 that artery artery lumen has reduced why because of the de de deposition of lipids cholesterol calcium iron 
because of our sedentary lifestyle and because of uh, uh, our the feed, fooding, feed, uh, uh, food habitat, food habit, sorry. So, if deposition is there, the lumen will be reduced. If lumen is reduced, then it will lead to the coronary artery disease. Clear? So, there is deposition of the calcium, fat, cholesterol and the fibrous tissue. And you know, because of the coronary artery disease, because heart, heart, right? Right? Heart, sorry. <laughs> heart, uh, coronary artery disease, there will be less supply. So, chances are that the heart muscle <coughs> will start damaging. If any tissue doesn't get <coughs> doesn't get enough oxygen, what happens is they will start dying. Similarly, they will also start dying. And if some muscles in the body, they are affected, that will give you pain. So that is the reason they feel pain. That pain is termed as angina, angina pectoris. Let's have a look also termed as angina pectoris. It's a symptom, symptom of acute ch chest pain because in the heart muscle, because of the coronary artery disease, the oxygen which are supposed to reach over here, the blood which were, the amount of blood which is supposed to reach over here, they are not reaching. So it will lead to a pain and it can occur in any age and commonly in the middle age and the uh, elderly it is affected. Next we are having a heart failure heart failure. Now, <coughs> now I'll be discussing some very important terminologies with you where the students, they mostly get confused that ma'am, what is cardiac arrest? Let's understand three different words. Cardiac arrest. And do tell me in the comment section if you like, like uh, this uh, uh, trick which I am telling you. Next, we are having a cardiac failure or heart failure, failure and heart attack. And this is also termed as myocardial infarction three different terminologies I am going to discuss with you. First is cardiac arrest. So just imagine the situation. Now, <clears throat> today, suppose, suppose on a particular day, uh, today, let's say it is 7 a.m. in the morning and today you have a test. Yeah. Somehow, somehow, like this should not happen with anyone. Somehow, police comes and police arrest you. In that case, what will be your marks? Your marks will be, if the paper is of 100 marks, your marks will be 100 out of, 0 out of 100. 0 out of 100. 0 out of 100, but that means no activity. No activity, that means nothing happened. That means sudden stop. Sudden stop of heart beat. That means sudden stop of heartbeat sudden stop of the heart sudden heart is not functioning zero hundred out of zero cardiac failure so because uh, you were uh, arrested so you were not able to uh, reach there and the arrest happened second thing is the <coughs> suppose one another student he or she got 30 out of 100. So that means this is fail. This is failure. So failure means enough oxygen supply is not there. Supply is there, but the enough oxygen supply is not there. Now look at this. Enough oxygen supply, that means heart functioning. Heart functioning is not proper. Heart functioning is not proper. It's not up to the mark. At this particular marks, what will your ma'am say? That means you are fail in the examination. That means the work which you were supposed to do at home, you didn't do that. So that means it is not pumping. So that means it is not pumping efficiently. You are not working efficiently, which they are supposed to do. <coughs> now next thing is heart attack. Heart attack means 
Now this I am not going to explain you with the help of a teacher example because I know you are going to make another story out of it. So heart attack, heart attack means heart itself is under the attack. Heart attack means heart is itself under the attack. That means the coronary artery disease. That means the oxygen supply of the heart is affected. Oxygen supply of the heart is a uh, heart tissue that is affected. That's it. Now let's look at this. Heart failure means the state of heart when it is not pumping blood efficiently. So please mention this in NCRT. 10 out of uh, sorry uh, 30 out of 100. Clear? Now, if sometime it is congestive heart failure, congestive heart failure, that means if there is congestion in the uh, lungs, congestion is there in the lungs and the prolonged congestion, if it is there in the lungs, that means the oxygen supply will be affected, there will be less exchange of gases. So, that means your heart will not be able to function properly. Congestive heart failure. Okay. Now, next one is a heart failure is not the same as that of the cardiac arrest. So, cardiac arrest is what? Cardiac arrest is when arrest, sudden stop, heart stops beating. Now, when heart attack, heart attack that means heart is uh, damaged, heart itself is damaged because of the inadequate blood supply, the coronary artery disease. So, this is the difference. Failure means you are fail 30 out of 100. Now, uh, if uh, arrest, 0 out of 100 clear arrest that means your teacher is arrested now happy arrest means the one who is giving you marks that herself is arrested clear hope hope everything is clear clear <clears throat> so let's find up let's find up the today's class and what is the homework so homework is Guys, what you have to do is, you have to practice PYQs. You have to practice PYQs and this I can assure you in this class, whatever we have discussed so far, you will be able to attempt 100% of those questions, 100%. And whatever problem you are facing, please mention in the comment section. How did you like the video? Do tell me in the comment section also. So take care with this. We have completed your this chapter also. It was nice having you all on this session. Take care guys. See you in the next class. We'll start a new chapter. Bye-bye everyone. Thank you so much.